So what is Clem? Correlative light electron microscopy. Life is built from biological cells. Each one a tiny factory loaded with the most incredible machinery optimized to carry out a very specific task. To fundamentally understand how these factories or cells work, we not only need to see how they are put together, but how they interact. Of course, we can see these interactions taking place using light microscopy and increase magnification further to look right into the cell to see the machinery at work. In fact, using electron microscopy, we can zoom in even further still to see how the machine is put together. But to really understand the building blocks of life, we ideally need to be able to zoom in from the micro view of the interactions between the cells right down to the nano molecular level using an unmanipulated sample in one instrument. So far, such an incredible zoom is not possible in one machine. We must correlate the images from the lower magnification of a fluorescence light microscope with the much higher resolution images of something like an electron microscope. The fluorescence signal pinpoints biological or even genetic activity, while the electron microscope resolves structural detail. For observation on the fluorescent microscope, biological samples, such as cells or viruses, are labelled with a fluorescent marker to pick out particular biological structures. They are then prepared on a 3mm diameter copper grid that fits into the end of a long rod-like sample holder, which is then loaded into the electron microscope. However, the sample chamber of an electron microscope is a harsh environment for biological cells. High vacuum and the focused electron beam will quickly destroy most living cells, so samples must be chemically fixed or frozen. It is generally recognised that rapid freezing is the best technique for preparing samples for electron microscopy. For plunge freezing, samples are blotted on filter paper to remove excess moisture and then plunged into a liquid ethane bath to freeze them in a fraction of a second. High pressure freezing with liquid nitrogen is another option. Both techniques create vitrified ice that occupies a similar volume to the water in the cell without the formation of large crystals, thereby leaving the cells undamaged. After sample freezing, the grid is first examined on the light microscope, primarily to check that the blotting and freezing process has not damaged the sample, as cells may have become dislodged or folded on the sample grid. Then, the sample is further examined with fluorescent light to identify the internal cell structures of interest. Why not bypass this light microscope step and go straight to the electron microscope? Well, besides the uninspiring lacklustre black and white image, trying to find an area of interest using just the electron microscope is extremely labour intensive. Imagine trying to find one particular type of brightly coloured tiny flower in a large meadow by wandering around using just a magnifying glass fitted with a black and white filter. You would go insane. When you found that area of interest on the light microscope, how do you go about finding that same spot back again in the electron microscope? One way is to use finder grids. These are similar to standard 3mm diameter electron microscopy grids, but with letters and numbers down the edges of the grid. There has been some success using software to map the grid on the light microscope and then to retrieve these coordinates on the electron microscope to find that same area of interest. The second major challenge is to transfer the frozen sample from the liquid ethane bath of the plunge freezer to the light microscope and then from the light microscope to the cryo-electron microscope all at cryogenic temperatures without any ice contamination which can result from condensation on the sample. As I'm sure you can imagine, ice crystals on an electron microscope are massive and completely obscure the sample. 
This can be particularly frustrating after the epic sample preparation that can take up to several days. Fortunately, Linkam have developed a cryo stage that has enabled scientists to observe these frozen grids on a light microscope and identify areas of interest without any contamination. The future of correlative microscopy is perhaps that there will be no correlative part. It will simply be microscopy and we will be able to zoom right from the cellular to the molecular in one fantastic instrument.